in reality, the signals aren't quite so clean. If we actually record a single photon hitting this PMT, the signal that we get out isn't instantaneous. The signal has some spread. Every time the camera is about to record a video, it actually records a thousand photons, individual photons without the laser blinking, and averages those together just to get like a noise level of what a photon looks like. This is one of those averaged out photon signals. The main peak of the photon here lasts from, I don't know, 55 to about 60. So these are in samples, which are in 500 picosecond or half a nanosecond sample rate. That means that we have an electronic signal in this piece of coax that goes from low to high in about three nanoseconds and then fades over the next three nanoseconds and then actually has some more wobbles again after that. What actually happened inside this PMT is that at one instant in time, a photon was absorbed on that piece of metal. It didn't take 10 nanoseconds with some wobbling at the end. It was instantaneous. I think this actual electronic signal is about half the fault of the oscilloscope being rated for 200 megahertz and about half the fault of the PMT because all the electrons, the million electrons or so that are bouncing around inside this PMT all take slightly different paths through space, which means they don't all take the same amount of time to get from the impact site to the wire. In the first video, I talked about this as multi-frame motion blur, sort of a artifact that afflicted all of the videos taken with a camera like this. And a few people in the comments suggested that I try a deconvolution algorithm to sharpen my data. Personally, I didn't know very much about deconvolution algorithms, and I had heard, probably in reference to microscopy somewhere, because that's what I would have been familiar with, that deconvolution was really difficult and like computationally basically a non-starter. But for simple signals like this, it seemed approachable. The idea of convolution is that if you have a perfect signal that looks like this, say laser turns on, laser turns off, but we have this minimum detectable signal blurring our measurement. The actual signal you measure is then the convolution of these two functions. In this case, a blurry step. The idea of deconvolution is that if we have our real measurement and we know exactly what this kernel or point spread function looks like, we should be able to mathematically reconstruct the original perfect signal. There's a lot of theory here and like a perfect mathematical deconvolution you can do with Fourier space and I have not taken the time to fully digest all of that. So today, I'm just going to be using a library for an iterative deconvolution algorithm that's built into SciPy that I can just use. This is a frame from a video that the new camera took with the disco ball in it. And if I take that pixel right there on the garage door that like is really bright because it's directly illuminated by the laser, and I plot the intensity of that pixel over time, we get something that looks like this. The light takes maybe five or 10 nanoseconds to get bright, and then it wobbles around for a little while, about 50 nanoseconds, because that's how long the laser is supposed to be on for, and then it fades after that. And then, you know, we've got some extra bumps. These are probably individual photons that were detected that were actually noise, unaffiliated with the laser. Now, the problem here that I'd really like to be able to fix is that if we zoom in on the beginning, this increase takes a while. The sharper that this gets, the more definition we have as the light moves across the room. This is the temporal resolution, but because everything's moving at the same speed, it's also the spatial resolution of what we can see in the image. Now, if we run this deconvolution algorithm, we can see that the orange line is actually fitting the blue line, but it's fitting it sharper. We see that instead of going from low to high in maybe 10 nanoseconds, it's going from low to high literally in like one or two frames. So this would be like 500 picoseconds. This is generating a sharper signal in time, which ends up giving us a sharper signal in space as we watch the beam front move because the beam front is always moving at the same speed, the speed of light. This looks like it should be a dramatic improvement because it's generating a significantly sharper signal in time. And I think if you just wanted to look at that wavefront, it is actually a much better signal. But let's look at other places in the frame. If I grab this pixel down here, below the part of the garage door that was directly illuminated by the laser, now we have a signal that looks like this. Actually, to the same scale that we had before, that gives us a signal that looks like this. The signal is really low, it's wimpy, it's jagged. This is all we've got to work with. 
At this pixel, we are receiving less than one photon per frame. Like, there is very little light reaching that location on the garage door that is then bouncing back to the camera. If we let this algorithm run for long enough, long enough that the actual picture of the beam would be like totally muddled with noise, it does try to recreate this signal using basically individual photons. These are discrete peaks that jump up in the graph that are only one frame wide. You can see that it's not doing a great self-consistent job at that because from iteration to iteration, the location of these peaks is moving dramatically. It's not like it's honing in on one answer. It's just sort of spitting out noise. But even if we take this at face value and we assume that every one of these spikes is when a photon hit the sensor, that's amazing, but it actually results in a less aesthetically pleasing image. I think the YouTube compression is probably just gonna eat this, so I guess make sure that you've turned up to 4K. But here's a raw clip and a maximally deconvoluted clip played back next to each other. The over deconvoluted clip here is just a noisy mess because in the vast majority of cases, the camera is trying to build an image with less than one photon per pixel per frame of video. So everything is black except when it flickers on. And despite that making the primary beam look a lot sharper and nicer, it makes the whole video a lot harder to look at. It completely destroys our ability to perceive darker details in the rest of the room. Now, if I had a much brighter light, so I was recording more photons, or if I was recording many more traces to average with the mirror pointing in each direction, this would get better. I actually originally had the laser blinking at 30 kilohertz so that I would generate 10 times as much data, but unfortunately the process of actually moving data from the oscilloscope to the computer over USB is so slow and I would have generated so much data. That would have taken my one hour data collect to generate an HD video and turned it into a waiting for overnight to generate an HD video. And I really don't wanna leave the laser and the high voltage PMT running overnight. Now, the smoothest results that I got were actually arguably cheating. For those, I was using this deconvolution kernel which is the photon kernel convoluted with a large box that represents the on time of the laser. This method feels a little bit like cheating because it assumes our illumination is this perfect box function, but theoretically, every location in this image is lit by the same time varying signal, and we know how long that signal lasts. So playing some games, deconvoluting with this kernel and reconvoluting with this ideal box kernel, we get a pretty awesomely smooth frame. Editing Brian here, this was actually a scene about deconvolution that was cut from the full video that I made about making a 2 billion frame per second camera. So thanks for watching and I'll see you over on the main channel.